And the title of my presentation is Improving Resilience of Coastal Communities Through Integrated Coastal Zone Management. Okay. Um, I am uh, taking experiences from our uh, project implementation. And later, I would also be uh, presenting a program that we will be doing. Dr. Julian said, and this is coming from the from the mayor that we start with one and learn from it and scale up. So uh, I would be presenting something that would embody that and uh, uh, this is a project with uh, G2A, uh, G2Asia, which we would be uh, modeling. So we're sort of modeling something here for resilience. I hope that would work. But you can comment on it so that we can still improve on it on uh, that concept, on that program, okay? So, UN Development Foundation uh, is uh, based in UN Eastern Samar. We work in seven municipalities. And Eastern Samar, or Eastern Visayas, is a supermarket of disasters or <laughs> hazards, natural hazards. You name it, we have it. From the typhoon, uh, the storm surge, which uh, recently uh, was really devastating, uh, flooding and drought, landslides, we have the most famous in the Ogun. Uh, some people call it the debris avalanche, uh, not just a uh, landslide. Uh, earthquakes, again we have the it didn't make much uh, media mileage because we had a 7.9 earthquake, but there was not no damage. But then again, it, uh, the the epicenter was in the bottom of the sea of Iwan. But you can imagine the panic that it caused. No, we thought it was something was ending with the shakes. No, then we also have harmful algal blooms, no? And this is a recurring, or this is already a regular occurrence in Eastern Summer, basically in Maqueda Bay. This is what is commonly referred to as the red tides. And of course, we have uh, volcanic eruptions. It, did, uh, it hasn't erupted yet, but lately, Oyster Visayas has several active volcanoes. The Biliran Island is also a volcanic island and we have other volcanoes. Uh, the pictures below are some scenes from the devastation in Eastern, in Iwan. Uh, this is from, oops, what is that? Uh, this is uh, a scene from our marine sanctuary uh, in December. Uh, the time is track in November. This is from one village and uh, this is from another village. So all the mangrove uh, trees and the uh, forest were defoliated. Okay, so this is where we operate. Uh, sorry, I couldn't find a, a good map. I'm like, This is, oh, sorry. Uh, this is the Philippines and this is Eastern Visayas. And uh, we operate, GDFI operate in the southern part of uh, the Samar Island, but part of the eastern Samar province, and this is it. This uh, is composed of seven municipalities, and this uh, purple color is the approximate uh, marine uh, uh, municipal waters of the seven municipalities. No? You see that Giwan is here, and it has the biggest uh, municipal water over 70,000 hectares. And uh, yeah, so uh, Human Development Foundation was founded in 1988. It's funny, but uh, we organized in August and then October came the a big typhoon that was Typhoon Union. So we were immediately, uh, uh, and the young fire. So we had that, we were not even registered yet but uh, we already got our fill of the disaster. 
uh, it reduced also G1 into a ghost town. But we didn't have so much uh, uh, humanitarian organizations by then. But the damage was uh, practically the same. Mm -hmm. But that was in 1988. Then uh, we focused as an organization in coastal zone management, uh, based uh, community-based coastal zone management. And uh, of course, as I said, G1 was ground zero during the typhoon Haiyan. Okay, so this is the G1 development foundation, what's left of it. <laughs> this is our, that's our gate. That's our training center, uh, roofless, and uh, uh, some windows destroyed. This is our, used to be two-story uh, stock house, that is, uh, the whole second floor was blown out. Um, this is our dormitory. You notice this one, this is a coconut trunk that got into the room. No? Luckily, those who evacuated here were able to transfer to the other room before the coconut trunk uh, fell down. And yeah, so. Okay. So what were our programs no? as part of the community-based uh, coastal zone management? We were doing, uh, I don't know if this is clear. Uh, we were doing marine biodiversity conservation because we believe in uh, diversity. As uh, uh, Julian said, diversity, stability, and resilience. We also believe that uh, diversity is uh, very much important for the sustained livelihood of our fishers. So we do, uh, for this, we have established a network of marine sanctuaries. In the seven municipalities, we have 25 marine sanctuaries that are managed by our by the people's organization. In some, in coordination with the local government unions. In 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 some, by them alone, no? uh, with our technical help. Then we also uh, enhance uh, uh, degraded habitats. We do a stock enhancement. And the stuff that we use is coming from our, as a product of our research and development. We spawn uh, giant plums, we spawn abalone, we spawn sea cucumbers, and we use the juveniles raised from the hatcheries to restock uh, areas that have been degraded, no? so that would uh, provide for our fishers. Um, we also do. Uh, mangrove forest management, and uh, we have never been into mangrove plantation. We do not like the program that the DNR has been promoting because they have been promoting monoculture of Rhizophora, which we uh, do not prescribe or we do not advocate. And not only monoculture of Rhizophora, they're also planting on seagrass beds. So the DNR thinks that changing one ecosystem to another is a good idea. So we never had that. So all our mangrove forests are uh, natural growth, and these are diverse. In one of our marine sanctuaries in Bagong Banua, it's less than, it's uh, maybe, uh, it's not even a hectare when, uh, during high tide, but we have, uh, we have 19, last count before Hayan, we have 19 species in that small patch. So, and uh, we know now that uh, they are resilient when you have high diversity because they recover fast also. Uh, we engage uh, the LGUs to take uh, more responsibility in coastal zone management. And for this, uh, after so many years, we have uh, organized them in what we call the Alliance of Seven for uh, Integrated Coastal Zone Management, or A7 for ICCM. This is basically LGUs, but with the participation of POs and line agencies like DFAR and DNR and DOT, and with GDFI as the convenor and secretariat. Um, we, oops. Okay. we also strengthen community participation in governance. Community organizing is part of our program since we started. And uh, GDFI, by the way, is already 25 years old. And 
we have federated the, the, our people's organization and now they are actively engaged in uh, the works that we have been doing also. So we have the Southeast Summer PO Consortium and uh, they are active in environmental protection basically. No? So for research and development, as I said, we test, uh, we develop uh, culture technologies together with uh, Marine Science Institute and with BIFAR. And we use this for uh, livelihoods and also for enhancement. So what happened after Hayat? So you saw how we are. But even with all those, uh, with all those uh, destroyed structures, we are still alive. We are still doing our uh, thing. So I was telling friends that immediately after the typhoon, um, we were the first to get to give one, so we were able to assess immediately the damage. No? And uh, so after Hayan, we continued with mangrove assessment and uh, and uh, cleanup. We are doing at the moment coral reef and fish assessment for all the, the seven municipalities and we are also doing uh, habitat enhancement at the same time. And for the livelihood, uh, our POs are, have uh, been able to access funds for some livelihood uh, projects uh, like the free range chicken and uh, we also distributed uh, fishing gears and seaweed farming um, materials. Okay, so for for future, this is already future plans, and this is the project that uh, I was uh, saying earlier that will be modeled with G2A and uh, also with other agencies. We would like the objective is to develop a resilient coastal community. And uh, this will be modeled in one island barangay in Maliwaliw, and barangay Maliwaliw. And the components of the project includes one better and safe household or houses for the families. The, this island has uh, around 100 families, and all houses were uh, destroyed during the typhoon, except for three standing, but also severely damaged. And many of the fisher folk are living on the fringes of the island. Now, ito, these are the people, you know, you don't have the land, so they stay on the fringes. The island itself is less than 100 hectares. So we will be relocating the, the, some 50 families, and uh, uh, together with them, we'll be constructing permanent houses, uh, row houses, with, uh, with the provision of uh, a backyard so that they can, do, they can have family gardens and a front yard for some aesthetics like uh, flowering plants. We will also uh, be constructing a safe place for their boats, uh, a proper marina, maybe in coordination with the BFAR also, and uh, they would have two marinas, one for when, during the southeast monsoon, and another one for the south, uh, southwest monsoon, so their boats are safe even if they're farther from the shore. This is the problem of the fishers because they don't like to be relocated away from the shoreline because of their boats. But if we provide them with, uh, with a safe place for their boats and they can uh, establish a mechanism in the guarding or security, provision of security for their boats, then that would not be a problem. Uh, we would be having uh, also uh, community centers from the place that they, they will vacate. We would be uh, establishing a green belt. This is a mangrove and beach forest green belt. And in that area also, we would have be having the community center because part of resiliency is develop, developing community spirit, a strong community uh, relationships so that they would be helping each other. You know? I think this is one really uh, indicator also. So the green belt uh, would, be, would include uh, mangroves and beach forests as well as fruit trees you know, that are suitable for the area. Then uh, we will be uh, 
having also environment friendly uh, livelihoods like beekeeping and mangrove uh, micro branching. Uh, the PO has a 94 hectare CBFMA in uh, around the island and this can be utilized or uh, developed into a micro branch. At the same time, uh, the mangrove trees, uh, that uh, there are several species of mangrove trees that provide nectar for the bees. And the uh, beach forest will also be providing nectar for the bees. So, including their uh, backyard gardens and also their front yard uh, flowering plants. So all the species that will be planted would be uh, inputting to the beekeeping uh, project of the uh, PO. No? Um, uh, also, uh, helping the families uh, send their, school, their, their kids to school. In the island, there's only up to grade six, and then the kids would have to cross to the mainland to attend uh, grade seven to 12 and college. So they would need uh, assistance for uh, that and uh, we're working on also on the scholarship uh, grants for the kids. And uh, continuing education and skills development, uh, including VRR and the CCA will also be conducted. Uh, we actually developed a Fisher Field School and uh, it is good to uh, orient the fishers with the basics of the marine ecosystems and about sustainability also. And uh, uh, we continue with the protected, uh, protecting and enhancing marine habitats. So this is, this is the whole program. This, is, this may look ambitious, this may, but we feel that this is really realistic and it all connects. So everything that uh, the components are not maybe standalone, but also are connected to each other. And uh, we uh, have introduced the concept of a conservation trade-off and this will not just be provided for the community, but the community has the responsibility to also protect and enhance the uh, resources, the marine environment and other resources. So it isn't like, you know, we're helping them and they're not, uh, they're just receiving it. No, they have to be active participants in the, in the implementation of the different components and also in the protection and enhancement of uh, the marine ecosystems. So with that, so again, as I said, this is our plan modeling with Give to Asia and we hope that this would uh, prosper, be successful, and then we can replicate this in other sites. So, thank you. So, after many five years, I'll be